Hi, everyone. I am here today to talk to you a little bit about the I that is me. And, you know, this month we've been talking about living with intention and living with purpose. And in talking to a lot of people, I found that they don't really have a good concept of who I truly am. So the I that they think they are is spouse, child, parent, coworker, friend, and they don't really have a very good grasp of who they truly are. And to me, it's truly sad because when you don't really know who you are at your very core, like who you truly are, you can't really live your life with purpose or intention. So me, personally, growing up, I was a daughter, I was a sister, um, and I was the responsible one. Um, my parents, I love my parents, so please do not think that I'm being negative or, you know, have anything bad to say about them. They, they had a lot of stuff going on, and unfortunately, I had to be the responsible one. It was my responsibility to make sure that everyone was awake, everyone was out, everyone went to school on time, everybody was fed, they were clothed, the house was clean, everything was taken care of on top of going to school and doing other things. So like I um, was always babysitting um, and it strikes me really funny because I remember babysitting when I was like eight years old and now I think of like people who are eight years old and I'm like, there's no way in hell I would let an eight year old watch a baby. So I don't know what was different back then. Even, even a responsible eight year old, I don't know that I could see a, a responsible eight year old taking care of somebody else's child. But anyway, um, so these were, we'll call them labels because they are labels. And as I grew up, you know, my labels changed. I was still a daughter and a sister and the responsible one, but then I was a straight A honor roll student. I was, you know, a, a model employee. I graduated from babysitting and doing odd jobs around the neighborhood to working in a restaurant. And um, I worked there for a little while. So of course, you know, I had my responsibilities at work and I had my work schedule and I had things that uh, besides other people's responsibilities that I was taking care of, now I have my own responsibilities that I'm taking care of that I have to make sure that I'm responsible for. So I'm watching these and taking care of all this stuff and, you know, making sure that everything's taken care of. And as I'm getting older, my, um, my responsibilities changed and my labels continue to change. So, you know, my labels went from child and sister or sibling and worker and student, you know, I'm still a child and a sibling and a worker and a student, but now I'm getting older and, you know, becoming an adult and I'm creating, besides the labels other people put on me, I'm creating my own labels. So, you know, I'm um, a college student. I am um, a girlfriend. I am a friend. I am, you know, um, an alcoholic. You know, these are labels. Um, although back then, I don't think I really considered myself an alcoholic. So maybe that wasn't a label I attributed to myself until later on in my life. But 
these labels are things that we attribute to ourselves and they're all like these different hats that we wear. So when we go to work, we're the, you know, the coworker, we're the boss, we're the employee, you know, we're the whatever your job responsibility is. You're the person that gets the coffee. You're the one that goes and gets lunch. You're the one that makes sure the mail gets taken to the post office. You're the one that runs the bank deposit. So these are all more labels that you attribute to yourself. And as you're getting older, you're piling on all these labels. And, you know, you get all these labels and you just keep piling on all these labels. And, and underneath all these labels and all these different aspects of yourself, the real you has a tendency to get lost. And it can take a long time for you to truly find the real you that's deep inside because, you know, we have peer pressure, we have family pressure, we have societal pressure to be a certain way, to do certain things, to act a certain way, to go here, go there, do this, do that, eat this, eat that, don't eat this, don't eat that, like this, don't like that, vote this way, don't vote that way, love this person, don't love that person. And we become really confused because we're trying to do all this stuff, you know, to try and keep everybody happy and we lose ourselves in all that. So what I really want to talk about today is finding the real you that is inside, that is buried deep inside, that's underneath all these labels. And you take all these labels and you just scrape them all away you have the real raw you that's left over that you're absolutely terrified for the world to see because you're afraid that nobody's going to accept you the way you are. You're terrified that nobody's really going to love you, that, you know, if you share yourself or your true self or you bear your soul to the world, that you're going to be rejected because in all fairness, we all want the same thing. We all just want to be loved. We want to be nurtured. We want to feel connection. And we feel like if we don't do these things for other people, if we don't act these ways for other people, if we aren't pretending to be who these other people want us to be, that we won't be accepted. And I, I'm here to tell you that's bullshit. I mean, it's complete and utter bullshit. I was terrified of this. Um, and it's it's been interesting because, you know, when I quit drinking, I had a lot of people tell me that, you know, number one, that you're never going to be able to, to quit drinking forever, um, that, it, you know, it's just a phase, you're going to, it'll be past and, you know, you'll come back to drinking. And it's been 18 and a half years since I've had a drink and and I'll be honest with you I don't miss it not one not one damn bit um I, I really don't like being around people who are drinking my husband doesn't really drink um and and I I love my life alcohol free I love my friends that I hang around with alcohol free and that's how I am right now and so here again is another label so now I am alcohol free and another label that I've picked up is vegan so i've been vegan for like 17 years you want to talk about going crazy people go insane when you tell them something like vegan and when i first went vegan i don't blame them for kind of being a little crazy because i like all new vegans went a little bit off the deep end trying to make everybody think like you know my way is the right way my way is the only way and eventually i realized that my way is the right way for me and if you don't like it, tough shit. Like, I don't care. I am who I am and I'm not going to change who I am because you don't like it. It took a lot for me to get to that point, for me to be able to say, I don't care what you think. I don't care what you say. And I am perfectly happy with me the way I am. And, you know, 
another problem that we have with the the I that is inside of us is we're not happy with who we are deep down inside. You know, we we look at ourselves and I tell people it's like the never ending hamster wheel of negativity that's going on. If any of you have ever seen a, a hamster running on a wheel, that thing will run forever. I mean, you could probably generate power for an entire city if you had enough hamsters running on wheels. Those things are insane. They just run and run and run and run all day and all night. And that's what happens with the negativity in your head. It just runs constantly, nonstop. You're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not thin enough. You're not, you know, whatever. You don't have the nice clothes. Your hair isn't the right color. Your hair isn't the right length. It looks funky today. You smell funky, whatever. I mean, there's just like all kinds of crazy things that your, your head just constantly says to you. And because of that, we have these really, really deep seated fears that people really won't love us because we really don't love ourselves. And once you can really get down to the root of who I really am, and you start looking at all of everything about you, all of your flaws and, and everything about you, you will start to realize that each and every one of us, we're all individuals. We're not meant to be the same. We're all individuals. And that's why we're called individuals, because we are different from everybody else. But we insist on trying so hard to be like somebody else. And when we try to do that, we lose ourselves again. We try to look like Shakira and JLo. We try to fit into skinny jeans. We try to, you know, mimic whoever the new pop star is and, you know, all this funny stuff. And, and, and we don't really find the true love that we need for ourselves because we're too busy trying to be someone else. And you can't be someone else. And you you can't. You just can't. You are not someone else. And you should stop trying to be someone else. And once you get to the point where you stop trying to be someone else, you will start to realize exactly who you are. And once you start to realize exactly who you are, then you can start figuring out how to love who you are. Louise Hay had, has an amazing book that I think works really, really great. It's called Mirror Work. And in the mirror, and I don't have a mirror, but I'll have my phone and pretend this is a mirror. And you take and you look at the mirror and you look at yourself, like look yourself in the eyes and tell yourself, I love you. I really, really love you. And I know it sounds crazy. Um, and it's really, really hard to do at first because most people can't look themselves in the eye and actually say that. When I first started doing the mirror work, I had a hell of a time trying to do it. I just, I couldn't do it. And it took every ounce of my effort to do it every single day. Now, every time I look at them, and I don't say it out loud because people look at me like I'm crazy. If I did that, they'd be like, what the heck's up with this chick? She's crazy. We need to call somebody and send her off to the loony bin. But I look at myself in the mirror. I mean, I will say it when no one else is around. And my husband's used to me saying it now, so he doesn't look at me like I'm crazy, although we did at first. But, you know, I, I find myself, and it's not vain. It is not vain. Self-love is not vain. There's something completely different. It's completely different between actually loving yourself and being completely vain. So, you know, you have to get past that vanity thing because a lot of people have a tendency to think that if you're staring at yourself in the mirror and telling yourself that you love yourself, that that's a vanity thing. 
And, you know, you really shouldn't be doing that. So you have to get past that first and then, you know, work on telling yourself that you love yourself. And then, so now I do it like every time, every time I pass a mirror, I look in the mirror and I look at myself and you know what, if somebody wants to think that I'm a little bit vain, whatever, let them think again, I'm to the point now where I really just don't care what anybody thinks about me. Um, because what they think about me is none of my business. It's not. All I care about is what I think about me, because that is the only thing that matters, what I think about me. And when I first started, you know, doing my transformational journey and going to where I needed to go to be where I am today, it took me a long time to figure out who the real I was, because my whole life, you know, I was a people pleaser. So I was doing everything that I could to make everybody else happy and I wasn't doing anything for myself. So one of the things that I started to do um, every year at the beginning of the year, everyone does uh, New Year's resolutions. Well, instead of a resolution, I decided to do a mastery list. And one of the things that I do is I learn a new skill. So I try to find something that I don't know and I'll go and I'll take classes. And um, I've talked about this before. And, and so I will go and I learn a new skill. And through learning these new skills and trying different things, and even joining meetups, you know, going to different meetups for things that sound interesting, um, to see if, you know, whatever it is, might be something that I might truly enjoy. And um, through taking all of these um, classes and courses, I've learned what I truly enjoy. Uh, one of the things that I did, and gosh, I think it was in like 2006, maybe it's 2007, um, I did the Master Gardener program. And um, I fell in love. Now, the Master Gardener program is like a college course, it's 16 weeks, and they teach you just enough to be dangerous, and then they let you out into the world with just this little bit of knowledge, and then you have to go and find your niche. And I happened to see an article in the town that I lived in at the time that the library was looking for somebody to take over their, um, they were looking for a master gardener to take over their butterfly pollinator habitat. And I was like, that sounds cool. I didn't know anything about pollinator habitats. I didn't know anything about butterflies or any of that stuff, but I was like, okay, well, I'll do it anyway. So I signed up and I think that was in a, maybe around November. So I had from November until spring to figure out what the hell pollinators were and how to run this garden. And so I bought books and did a lot of research over the winter and I absolutely fell in love. So now I love gardening, absolutely love gardening. I would spend all day, every day out in the garden. I love hiking, I love reading. So these things are what I have been able to cultivate for myself. These are my interests and things that I love that I'm truly passionate about. And I've only been able to figure that out because I started taking time for myself. I started doing things for myself. I stopped trying to make everybody else happy because I realized that the only person that you can truly make happy is yourself. You cannot make anybody else happy and you cannot base your own happiness on somebody else. Because if you make your happiness dependent upon somebody else, you've just given away all of your power. Every ounce of power you have, you've just given it all away. The only person that can make you happy is you. And you can only make yourself happy if you take time for yourself, you take care of yourself, you figure out whatever it is that you truly love, that you truly enjoy, and you nurture those things. You cultivate those things. You cultivate friends around those things. So, you know, you'll end up having groups of friends. So I've got groups of friends that read. And we get together and we have talks and discussions about books. 
Um, I love uh, horror and sci-fi books, but I also love personal development books. I love professional development books. So I've got three different groups of people that I talk to about these different things because my horror and sci-fi book friends don't necessarily like, um, you know, books about personal development and spirituality. Um, maybe they would, I don't really know. Uh, maybe more on the quantum physics realm. I no, don't really know about that, but I want to talk to people who are on the same level because they're going to understand where I am. They're going to understand where I'm coming from. And the interesting thing about hanging out with people who share the same interests is, you know, you are the sum average of the people you hang around with. So if you're hanging around with the people who are holding you back, you're never going to grow. You're never going to move forward. You're never going to evolve. You're never going to become a better person. But if you hang out with the people who are doing the same things that you love to do and, you know, you're cultivating these friendships, then you're elevating yourself. So you're moving from being stuck to moving forward. You're moving towards a progression of yourself. So my goal for myself every day is to wake up and be the best version of myself that I can be possible. Every single day, best version of myself possible. Tomorrow, best version of myself possible. Day after, best version of myself possible. And I can only do that if I'm doing things to move myself forward, if I'm advancing myself, if I'm hanging around with people who are on my level and, and lifting me up and raising me up. If I'm hanging out with these people who aren't going anywhere, who aren't doing anything except sitting around watching TV all day long, you know, every day, or they go to work and they come home and they complain about everything all night long, that just brings you down and you're not going to have the energy and you're not going to want to do anything. So you have to hang around with the people who are going to elevate you and who are going to move you forward and who are going to support you and who are going to work with you on doing what you love and, and, you know, helping you to figure out who the true I is inside. And that is the biggest part of living your life with intention and purpose, because once you can figure out who the I is, what the I truly loves, and then start loving the I, you know, like really, really, truly love the I, uh, everything, every single thing, every pimple, every ingrown hair, every hangnail, every single thing about yourself, fat thighs, big butt, whatever, just love yourself because this is all we've got, right? And this is like the only home. This is the only home that I am ever going to have to live in for my entire life. I really want to love my home. So I work on loving my home. Not only do I work on loving my home, I work on making my home better, making my mind better clearing out the negative thoughts. And, and it's not even really clearing out the negative thoughts, but just recognizing that the negative thoughts come and saying, thank you for letting me know that, but I'm going to choose something different and making a different choice, choosing to believe something different. So that's pretty much all I have for today. Um, Next week, I've got another interview. So we're going to be doing an interview next week at 7 p.m. with Kate Moynihan. She wrote a book, um, and, and it was an amazing book. I just finished it last week, and we'll discuss it a little bit um, more next week. But she wrote a book where she basically did that. She just kept, she kept trying to make everybody happy, but she was miserable. She kept trying as hard as she could to live the life that other people thought that she should live, and she was miserable. And when she finally broke free and started living her own life, she was finally happy. 
and not only happy, but everything worked out for her. So um, I really want to spend some time talking to her about that next week and letting you guys hear a little bit about her story. And, you know, maybe we can figure out uh, together, you know, how we can get us all moving forward in uh, the right direction. So that's all I have for today. Um, I hope you guys have a great week and I will talk to you guys next Thursday.